undeniably one of the best chess players in the world right now, with a peak rating of 2844, which is the third highest in chess history. The chess machine, the calculation beast, Fabiano Caruana. He's one of my favorite chess players, and in today's video we're going to analyze one of his best games. This game was played in round 4 of the 2018 World Olympiad, taking place in Batumi, Georgia. With the white pieces we have Fabiano Caruana, and with the black pieces we have Vishwanathan Anand, who pretty much needs no introduction. He's a former world champion, he's ex extremely strong, he's revolutionized chess, Indian chess specifically, and the list goes on and on. Let's get going with the game. Fabi opened up with d4, Anand responded 9f6, c4, e6, g3, getting ready to fianchetto the bishop, d5, bishop g2, and we have ourselves a Catalan opening, which is known, well known for this minor piece on g2, the bishop being on the grand diagonal. Black has two ways to play in this position, bishop e7, the closed variation of the Catalan, or d takes e4, which is what Anand played, the open defense. White played queen a4 check, knight bd7, white got back the pawn that they just sacrificed, and in this position we have the first enigmatic move. You see, probably you're thinking, bishop e7, black castles and everything's fine, and you're not wrong, bishop e7 is absolutely fine. But Anand plays, plays a6, and the reason why this is a good move, and it's difficult to understand a little bit, is because it may look like it's, lo it's moving to the side of the board, but the idea is to make, to exploit, I should say, the weak queen on c4 by playing b5. So for instance, let's say white were to play a silly move, h3, b5, queen c2, and rook b8, black empties the diagonal, which is mainly the, the main source of headaches for black very often. This bishop on g2 is no longer targeting anything else. So black is happy. That's why in this position, the main line is queen c2. But on that note, Fabiano, who's an extremely well-prepared player, plays bishop e3. And this back then was a novelty. David, what is a novelty? A novelty is a move that has never been played before or has never been seen in the top level. So Fabiano Caruana was the first guy to say, hey, bishop e3, I think this is interesting. So I'm going to play it. No one has ever seen this move. And when you're in this position as black, so Vichy in this position, he's kind of wondering, oh my goodness, I've never seen this position before. I've never seen this bishop e3 move. It looks weird. I'm in danger. Why? Because Fabi, knowing that he uses computers, he double checks with, with variations and he helps himself from, from the computers and their variations. It's a dangerous place to be. Black said bishop d6. I'm just going to play natural chess. b5 is okay. But the idea of bishop b3, or one of the ideas, is that now you can play queen c1. Why is this so strong? Black would like to play knight d5, and this is normally the main line after queen c2, or sometimes. But now there's bishop g5. This queen supports this bishop, you can't take it of course. If you play f6, you're happy, you just drop back, and you've created this weakness on e6 and f6. And if bishop e7, you take. Black has to take back with the queen, if not, this is, this is a big problem. And now you take, and you win a pawn. So, already here you can tell that this, queen c this bishop e3 move has a little bit of venom. As I said, black played bishop d6, white dropped back, anticipating b5. Black castled short side, white developed the knight. David, why did white develop the knight to h3 and not to f3? Knight f3 would have been absolutely fine. But the problem with this is that it allows knight d5. It may block the bishop in the future. In fact, it's already blocking it right now. And knight h3 is not as bad as it looks. It may look visually bad, but it is jumping to f4 very quickly. It is supporting bishop, g bishop g5 sorry, in many, many lines. And very importantly, this bishop is now enjoying themselves, they, there's still a lot of scope for that bishop. e5 played by Anand, once again knight f4 was one of the ideas, so black says none of, I don't want any of that. White castled, finally, you have to castle very very quickly in the opening, if not you're gonna get checkmated. And h6, which is a preparatory move. What did, what did black, Anand, want to prepare? Knight g4 was in black's cards, well, that was an option, but bishop g5 is annoying. You have to either... Uh, you never want to play f6 because then after takes, takes, and so like bishop d2. Once again, you've created this weakness along the, the a2, g8 diagonal. You never want to play f6. F, f3, f6, there is this famous quote in chess, which is never play f3, never play f6 because it is just weakening a lot. Very often, but never say never. Even more in chess. 
So knight g4, you're not ready to do that as black. That's why h6 is played by Anand. d takes e5, knight takes e5, knight c3. And now, once again, black could play knight e g4, for example. But this is still not what black wants. Now, it seems like white is ready to play bishop f4. And, well, okay, what do you do as black? If you if you take this knight, knight takes f4, now all your pieces are suddenly pretty well coordinating. This bishop is very well, very well placed. These two knights are looking to the center. You're getting ready for rook a d1. And in the meantime, black has superfluous knights blocking each other. This bishop can't develop. This b7 pawn is weak. For example, let's say black goes g5, which is a desperate measure. This is already kind of worse. Bishop d2, f4, f4 is coming. You're going to target this weak pawn chain. This is not what black wants. That's why Anand played queen e7 first. Rook a d1, rook e8. Just getting ready for well, some potential tactics in the middle. Getting developing your pieces, improving them, which is what you should do. Knight f4 played, getting ready for knight e f d5 or knight c d5, c6, preventing that, and at the same time, finally getting ready to 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 develop this bishop because this bishop on g2 was constantly taking on b7, and bishop d4. We have this position here, and this is a critical moment of the game. In this position, Anand had a 15-minute think, and decided to play g5. Very often here, you, you well, any, anyone, when I say very often, I mean popularly, people would play bishop d7, which is just developing a bishop, and you're just getting ready for rook a d8, finally you're getting full development. But the problem with this move, and what I think Anand didn't want out of this, is that after something like knight e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, there is some pressure as white, maybe bishop f5, maybe you just continue to put a little bit of, improve the position little by little, putting pressure little by little. This is known as squeezing water out of stone, which is something that Magnus Carlsen does very well. If you don't know who Magnus Carlsen is, the best chess player in the world right now. But Bishi didn't want that and sensed when these players, they're top players, they're incredible players. When these players sense that stuff is going wrong, they try to prevent it as quickly as possible. That's why g5 is played. And it is a double-edged sword. In this case, if white plays very accurately, and by the way, Fabi is known to play very accurately, then white will get an advantage. White played knight d3, of course, you have to save that knight from being taken by the pawn. Knight takes d3, rook takes d3, and bishop e5. Trying to trade pieces and get a little bit of danger out of the, out of the position. Queen d2, very accurate move. If you try rook e3, this is not the best after knight g4. So you, you both defend and attack at the same time. So this is this is good for black. Queen d2 played by white, bishop f5, and e4. Very, very cold move. And what I mean with this is that you have to know what you're doing. Bishop g6, and we reach the second most important critical moment of this position. Or this game, sorry. After bishop g6, it seems like black has weakened the dark squares and the light squares. When you move pawns in front of your king, your king in general, your king's safety starts deteriorating. Your, your king starts feeling a little bit scared. So bishop g6, already here, if white plays accurately, as I said before, white will get an advantage. And that's what happened. White played f4. Bishop takes, uh, g takes f4, sorry. G takes f4. Queen c5 check. There was not much to be done before that, by the way. If you take bishop takes d4 first, rook takes d4, rook a d8. This is going to be a big advantage for white after e5, f5, and this looks horrible. Uh, g4. This is this is horrible. According to the computer, this is what black should have played. But it, I, re I, I refuse to believe that because it's in 100 Grandmaster games, white will win this 90%. I'm quite sure. It just, you, you, well, the, the reason why the computer gives this as a, as a draw is because eventually the, the black is going to sacrifice something on f5 and it's going to be a draw. That's what Anand should have played according to the objective truth. But okay, I think g takes f4 is, 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 is a good try. Queen c5 check played by Anand. And the problem is that after king h1, everything's decided on whether black can take on e4 or not. If black can indeed take on e4 and get away with it, then black is fine. But if black can't, then white is winning. Black is in very big trouble because f5, e5, rook g3... You're gonna get checkmated. Black took on e4. If you don't take on e4, as I said, you're just going to get checkmated. You're, there's nothing you can do. f5 is coming. Rook g3, queen takes h6 ideas are in the air. So knight takes f4. 
played by Anand. Knight takes e4, and rook takes e4, very resourceful. If you take with the bishop, you just take back, rook takes e4, and queen g2 check would be winning material and winning the game. So rook takes e4, now if you take, this is a bad move now, because you're in check, you can't go to g1, the queen is occupying that whole diagonal, so you have to block with the rook, and you will get back your material. You can wait a little bit, actually. You can leave that bishop on e4 because it's pretty strong. The light squares are eternally weakened. That's what we call chronicle, chronicle weakness. And you're, you're fine as black. But of course, Fabi didn't take on e4. Fabi played rook g3, which is the first accurate move. In a sequence of only two moves, but they're difficult to find. Rook g3, the first accurate move out of two, which threatens f5. Because of this bishop being pinned. Black play rook d4, very good to try, practically, because you are losing objectively, but white has to find the best move. And in this position, white has only one move to win. You have to move the queen, of course, because the rook is attacking your queen. And Fabi play queen e3, and that is indeed the correct move. If you play queen f2, black plays king h8, and all of a sudden, you can play a5, but the, you're not going anywhere. So, for instance, in this position, after queen e3, if king h8, this is absolutely losing because of f5. And this, this is mate. The queen e3, very accurate move. Queen c3 not working either because after queen takes e3, b takes e3. f5 is a threat, but black threatens something important, which is the exchange of this rook on g3. If you go f5, now you take first and play bishop h5, and you've survived as black. The queen c3 also a mistake. Queen f2 a mistake, queen c3 a mistake, but queen e3 the most accurate move. In this position, black tried king h8, but after f5, bishop h5, sorry, uh, not king h8, king h7, but after f5, once again, if you take, you're losing this. If you give this interment so that's not working, you just go back. And if you go bishop h5, rook h3 is winning. So after f5, or before that, I think, black resigned, Anand was unfortunately met with a novelty which is always a tough spot to be and in the top absolute top level of chess these guys are just ready to play a novelty against you and that equals a winning game because it has never been seen been seen before this bishop e3 that happened in move what seven in the catalan which is something difficult it's amazing i think that this game was really instructive in terms of how to prepare and also how to make the most of your advantage being very careful and accurate with the way you convert Oof. thank you very much for watching if you have any questions any suggestions if you think i messed up in saying anything any cool things you would like to share please let me know down in the comments subscribe give a like i would really appreciate it and have a nice day